Asking children to draw rainbows and flowers for frontline workers in Melbourne's hospital. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? All right, I um, I'm going to ask you guys to bear with me. This is the first time I've ever hosted a uh, a Zoom. So, uh, <laughs> well, so far so good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got a little remedial training this afternoon, so <laughs> well done. It's actually quite relieved when, when they said we could still meet by Zoom. I tell you, it just saves so much time. It does, it does. But I, you know, I think it it, it also takes something away. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's true. It's yeah. a trade off. I feel like I'm phoning it in. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, well, we seem to still be able to get some stuff done. So that's the good news. So uh, I don't have Elizabeth on my list here, but. Uh... So Elizabeth is. Um sort of a, our guest speaker tonight. She's ah. joining us from the Pollinator Pathways, Large Mount Mamaroneck. Oh, that's a great program. Yeah, so she's just gonna give us a little update on what she has, what that little team has in store for this year. Great. There's Ellen as Liam. <laughs> How come you're joining as Liam? <laughs> I had to get a backdoor entry into this meeting. Oh. Hi, Lou. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you. How are Thank you? Thank you for joining us. Nice to meet you. So um, my, my village email has been set up. I have been getting emails. And when I told good, Sally good, good, good. that I didn't get the zoom link she said it must have gone to that email like i didn't get it and like i was like getting a wrist laugh i, I they wouldn't send it to me so mm. i said Liam, can you send me the link <laughs> you know they um oh, dear. they wouldn't send it to my private um, to my uh, my regular phone they just won't do it and yeah, i understand yeah. that there's a security issue with that so yeah well i guess yeah so she said i can um get it from the website and be promoted but so i i sort of got in through a back doorway my dog is now staring at me um are you away where are you ellen you're not at home you know i am i'm actually in my kitchen which i never oh, do right. i i have an odd night where nobody's home tonight so i'm like i don't have to you know hide myself away so yeah it's um yeah i know the it. feeling me and the doggy yeah how you doing hi liam liam i'm showing up as you maybe i could rename myself let's see if i could do that yeah yeah, I need my own identity. Okay. There we go. There you go. Um, so who else do we have here? What constitutes a quorum? Would that be a... Um, that would be six of us. Uh, yeah. We, um, there's only one person that I know of that cannot attend, so we should just give it another few minutes. Okay. Is that Debbie? Yeah, she's in Mexico. So that, okay. But we're expecting everyone else tonight? Um, as far as I know, we are, yeah. Okay. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. I'll be right back. Okay. 
Okay. Elizabeth, do you have um, something that you're going to present? Um, well, not really. I'm okay. just going to talk like that because I had, I think, about 30 seconds to prepare this. Renee knows that, but I can still say what we're doing. And I thought, as I had been, you know, invited, that was better than putting it off a month. Absolutely. And pollinators are very much on our mind right now. Yes. It's very timely. Right. Yep. Um, let me let me text a few people and see if they're getting on. Hang on. We are, we're having many of you tonight. <laughs> Hi, Mandy. Did no one get Sally's email? No, I did. I didn't. <laughs> did you did? Obviously, Liam. I did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, so Lou got it. Liam, you got it. I got it, yeah. And Elizabeth, you got it. Hmm. So, um, um, so I think we have a quorum now, right? One, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, six. Wait, was Mandy on? I thought I saw her. I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry, you were, oh. I'm here. Okay. Oh, it says Liam. <laughs> also Liam. Yeah, you can rename yourself. If you oh, okay, to. cool. It doesn't matter. Right. And um, do you need to see Dan before we, uh, you know you have a quorum or is it? Uh... Dan, are you with us? Um, I am. I was just jamming down one bite of dinner and I'll be back in two seconds. Oh, yeah. No, please. It, I know the feeling. I, no, I am okay. here. Okay. All right. Well, hi, everybody. We're good. Hi. All right. So um, it's 704. So I'm going to make a motion to, um, to begin the meeting. Just um, we have a pretty full agenda and I know we we want to cover everything. So um, I, I am expecting Christy and, and Dave. I'm not sure about Tim and I know Debbie is in Mexico. Lucky her. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, I'm going to make the motion to start the meeting if anyone wants to second that. Second. Okay, terrific. And we have to vote. All in favor. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Dan. You're good. Um, so we do have um, Elizabeth Poyer here to speak with us tonight, but I just, if Elizabeth, if it's okay with you, I just want to um, go through some of our normal admin stuff before we get to you. Um, first is which we vote to approve the, the minutes from um, our January meeting. So hopefully everyone had a chance to, to read them and give Renee any comments that you may have had. And if not, we could just um, vote to approve them. Yeah, I didn't receive any other edits other than what you gave me, Ellen. Okay, okay. Um, so I will make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, let's take a vote. Okay. Dan? Dan, are you a yes? Dan. <laughs> yes, Dan I am a yes. I'm, back. I'm done. I'm okay. here. Time. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Okay. Okay, great. Um, wait a second. I'm sorry. Let me just, I have, I'm pulling up too many files here. Renee, what happened to your um, little high school kids who were helping you with the minutes? Yeah, so they graduated. <laughs> They're in college. <laughs> exactly. Can we find new ones? Can I write someone? I'll write. Well, so I had not reached out, I must admit, to replace. Um, that was Mackenzie. Um, but Debbie has very kindly offered to step up. Oh. 
Okay. So this is the last meeting that I'm going to do the minutes for, and Debbie's going to take over in March. Great. But then she could also, you know, we could still reach out and have somebody helping with the note taking. It, and it just, it is actually kind of helpful. Um, you still end up obviously having to yeah. do stuff, but um, it's, it means you can, I feel like you can participate a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No. Mandy, you may have missed it, but I think it was at the last meeting or two meetings ago where we said we need to switch it up. We want Renee to be more actively participating and she's been doing an amazing job, but it's her time, you know, her term should be up for that. Yeah. So Debbie stepped in just she is away this month. That's great. Um, so I just, before we um, turn it over to Elizabeth, I just want to, one thing I want to mention, and I think many of you know about this initiative, but um, this initiative called the Healthy Clubs um, was formed a couple of years ago, and it's really sort of become very active. And I think it's just worth being aware of whether just for informationally or if you, anyone in our committee wants to get more involved, but it basically, it's like a consortium, a consortium of all the clubs in the area, the beach clubs, the golf clubs, and most of them have each formed their own sustainability green committees. Um, I actually am on the committee for my club um, for Beach Point. I just joined it. But nice. Orienta has a club, um, Lodge Point Shore Club, uh, Horseshoe Harbor. So if anybody is a member of a club and wants to get more involved from that angle, I, you know, it's not a heavy lift. They, they don't meet that often. Um, obviously, it's seasonal mostly, but it's, you know, it is nice to see that um, things that we talk about here are being talked about sort of in that venue as well. Um, so I did attend a meeting, my first meeting in attendance of being on the Beach Point Committee, um, January uh, 27th, and I, I'll just give a quick run through of, you know, what was talked about. Um, so Lisa McDonald, who runs the Larchmont Environmental Committee, did a presentation about um, EV charging stations, trying to get clubs to have EV charging, charging stations, um, and she was going to work on that at the Shore Club, I could tell you that we have at least two or three at Beach Point, um, which is great. And then also talked about sustainable landscaping, you know, using electric equipment, avoiding pesticides, um, that sort of thing. Um, some of the clubs are really focused on starting uh, food scrub composting, which is great. And um, using um, like for their outdoor dining, instead of using, you know, single use plastic, trying to use, um, compostable serveware and um, things of that sort. So there's, it's like a nice exchange of ideas. And um, do they, do the clubs have to, because they're a sort of commercial entity, have to do food waste recycling through someone else? So they would have to do it through their, their own carding company. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, the village would not pick up for, for the clubs. Okay. Um, you know, some clubs are, you know, moving away from trying to get their um, members to give it by giving away, um, you know, water bottles to get them to use their own water bottles, have filling stations. There's some of them at tennis ball recycling, um, using LED lights inside it out. So there, there's really a lot of um, this initiative started about two years ago. And interestingly enough, I was at a different club and on a different committee. <laughs> um, and so it sort of started from scratch and it's really made a lot of momentum. And um, so I, was, I just want to, you know, report on that. And if anybody wants more information, I'm happy to talk to you more about it offline. But I just think it was an interesting thing to sort of know that it, this is going on in our community. Do they all talk to each other? Like, I'm just curious. Yeah, so the meeting that I attended a couple of weeks ago um, was that. It was, it, was every, it was the members from each of the clubs getting together with the other clubs. And I don't know how often those meetings are held. Um, so yes, there's intra-club meetings and inter-club meetings. Okay, I was just wondering. Yeah, because that's the nice thing. So there's a really good exchange of ideas amongst yeah. clubs. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Nice. Um, all right, so I am going to uh, turn it over to Elizabeth so we don't hold her up because the next part of the meeting is gonna take longer and I want everyone to be on the call for that. So Elizabeth, I'm gonna um, turn it over to you. 
Okay, great. Um, I just made a few little notes because as I mentioned earlier, I, I didn't have as much time to prepare as I wanted to. Um, life got in the way. Uh, and there's so much to say, and I don't want to take up too much time, but one, you know, what we are doing, Larch Mama Marinic Pollinator Pathway, um, we're getting ready for spring like everybody else. And we are tentatively planning to have our pollinator garden tour in May. Um, Westchester wide, it will be in July. And we thought it would be a good idea to um, have something before people go away for the summer. And last year it was June, so May will be a different time in the, in the garden. So anybody uh, in the village of Mamaroneck who wants to open their property, I know that uh, Renee is in contact with a lot of people and, and helps us with that. She's on, she's on our team. Mandy has helped us in the past too, very, very much. Um, we're, we're starting to note down, um, you know, new gardens and old that uh, people who would, who, who would like to, to show them. And we will need volunteers because one of the things that really reassures people with the garden tour is knowing that we have one or two people, uh, there who can direct foot traffic if need be, or give information. And it worked as you know, uh, very well that way, um, last year. Uh, the other thing we will be doing is having a table at Larchmont uh, at Earth Day in Larchmont on April 23rd. Um, so we did a lot of outreach in the fall. I think some of you know that we we did a lot of events, um, the Lions Club Service Fair, the, the Mamaroneck Repair Cafe, um, Larchmont Day, Ragamuffin Parade. We had excellent um, feedback and contact with the public. One of the most important things for us is showing uh, how to do this, giving away plants or seeds, and Mandy is a specialist in that regard. Um, and, and we would like to, uh, Mandy, I know you're talking about this uh, on Facebook, we would like to participate in plant and seed exchanges. We're not organizing one for the moment. We are planting um, winter, you know, uh, sowing, uh, seeds now that are outside being cold the way they have to be. And we hope to hand out those sprouted little plants in the spring as part of our outreach to people, because as some of you know, it, it, it's not always as easy to find the native plants as we would like it to be, um, although it's getting easier. And another outreach that we've done uh, is to talk to uh, nurseries and uh, just recently we came up with, this is just a, you know, quickie thing because nurseries are starting to order plants now, right? A quickie list of some of the 20 best sellers um, of native plants so that nurseries who haven't been doing this at all, you know, uh, can get interested because they're starting to understand that this sells. Um, we've had excellent response to our initiative. It's thrilling to be working in an area of green, uh, I've done others that were a bit of a, a harder sell, uh, but this uh, seems to be a movement whose time has come. And so it's just thrilling to talk to families and children and really people of all ages who want to do uh, a little bit of um, supporting the ecosystem and the environment and the butterflies and the pollinators. We are working on um, creating uh, our website. We've started. Um, but this is very slow because we have a very small team. We are interested in building our team because we'll be able to do more. Um, we've, we're um, preparing our Facebook page and um, you, we're gonna use that to talk about our local events and just circulate all this good information that's going around to people who might not be on all the Westchester uh, list serves and everything else where we get so much fantastic information. There's a lot going on. Uh, we, our goal is to work together with mun municipalities when we can. Um, uh, Ellen, when you were talking about the clubs, you know that I am involved in the Houses of Worship Green, which is a wonderful organization in Larch Mountain Marinette, where we have houses of worship of all faiths who meet uh, you know, regularly to talk about green initiatives in their place of worship and the pollinator gardens, again, are taking off there. There's some absolutely wonderful things going on and we can provide, um, you know, the, the LMPP can provide information on 
landscapers who are going to work with native plants, um, you know, at high end or normal, um, you know, expertise, uh, advice on planting, um, resources and, and connecting um, committees in these uh, places of worship with, with uh, people who can help them achieve their goals. Uh, we also work with other groups such as the Girl Scouts and the public libraries. So um, we are open to working with any type of group really. And um, one of our um, uh, MOs, the part of our MO is people who can come to us who need support from Pollinator Pathway. Uh, we are looking for projects that can get going sort of this year. Uh, in other words, one of the things that helps us to decide who we're gonna work with is which of the projects are kind of getting ready to move ahead, which where we could help and participate. Um, so Elizabeth, uh, um, yes. you could stay on because we're gonna be talking about two very large initiatives that this committee has underway right now. Um, so I'll let you finish, but I want to um, give time to Christy and Mandy to talk about absolutely what, what we're doing in this in this arena. Fantastic. So um, I can finish up uh, by saying that we one of the other things we do is we like to bring speakers. So we like to coordinate with as many groups as possible so that that could be on Zoom at the library or even in person, but so that all of our three municipalities can uh, participate and benefit from that. Um, and we also have some donors who on a much more uh, modest level from the grant that I understand that you guys are, are, are working with now may be able to provide some financing for uh, a garden that would meet uh, in a public place that would meet a criteria of design and also maintenance, at least for the first two years. So we're open to hearing about those um, possibilities. Uh, mapping is an important thing. Mandy's been doing some mapping. We haven't decided if we're going to do what the river towns are doing, where they're doing a Google map. It's a little bit tedious. Mandy, you and I need to talk about that separately. Uh, you can use my map. map. <laughs> yeah, you can use my map. I Great. Don't mind. <laughs> Fantastic. We've so we need to decide whether we're going to also be putting things on the pollinator pathway northeast or just doing Mandy's local map. Um, you know, whichever no one, is going to be. I, I hate to say it that nobody uses the pollinator pathway map in our neighborhood because people are too lazy to input the information themselves. So yes, I I put all the information in the map, and people were happy to message me pictures and info. Fantastic! That's Where great. Actually, map? that's Where great to this hear. Map reside. Um, I made a Google map. Uh, just with the Facebook people that are in my little group, and we have about I think fifteen people so far, fifteen houses. Um, and they just gave me a paragraph of information, a few pictures, and I just did it because I, I partially because I was thinking maybe for the grant, but regardless, uh, you know, pollinator stuff is all about like connectivity. So it could be used for anything we do in the future. So if we just gather the content, eventually it'll pay off. It's people's homes who is have- Catherine Desmond on that? I put her there. <laughs> okay. And is Kate, is Kate's garden on that? Um, no, she didn't tell me yet. Um, she knows about the, about it yet, but I'm okay. sure we could put her there. Okay. Yeah. She's just on the street from Kate, uh, from Catherine. Yeah. I didn't know where she is. They have another neighbor who is in our group whose her yard is ridiculous. I'm sure everybody knows her. Uh, Jen, I think Sinclair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Her yard is great. The house on the corner. Yeah, <laughs> you can't miss her with that big wall. She's great. Any questions for Large Mob and Marinick Pollinator Pathway? Um, I have one question just about the, the places of worship. Does, is, is there anyone right now like thinking about doing a pollinator garden? Like, are, are, is it like being talked about? Because I don't know any of them that actually have one. Do that? So, well, even at the, I mean, some of them do have tiny ones. Um, mm -hmm. There are native plants, for example, that were put in a couple of years ago at the Larchmont Avenue Church. But I know that St. John's 
Um, I haven't reached out to, to Lisa because she's been uh, very busy with uh, family matters, but uh, St. John's Episcopal in Larchmont was pretty far along in planning their pollinator garden. I know where it's gonna be, and that was supposed to go in this spring. So if they're on target for that, that's very exciting. And that's a cool. number of the temples also are, are uh, you know, have got plans and, and are very, very, very interested in moving ahead with this. That's um, great, I didn't know it existed. Yeah, the the uh, the uh, houses of worship green is open to any house of worship in the local area, not just Large Bob and Marinick. And uh, you know, the more the better. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't aware of that either. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's it's fascinating some of the things that you said because there there's so much energy that sometimes even just finding the smallest connection all opens up a lot of new doors, and I think that that's a fantastic door to open. Um, and it sounds like you guys have really gotten some energy, which is wonderful. Um, I'll give you a tiny brief about what we've been working on the past couple of weeks, um, which it, it's what it's done more than anything is, is, is helped us get focus and consolidation and, and mapping and concept and, you know, both short term and long term. And so we, Mandy found this fantastic grant through the, um, it's the, National Environmental Education Fund, um, and, and sponsored by Toyota. And so we've been frantically, not frantically, it's been a long brewing process, um, but, but very actively pulling it together um, in concept um, to locate pollinator gardens on public village owned property, um, primarily along waterways um, with, with mutual needs of pollinator planting opportunities as well as invasive removal. And so the, the grant is hand in hand, which to me is fantastic. And um, so we've been photographing and mapping and, and strategizing as to pollinator gardens on 20 specific primary sites in the village of Mamaroneck, and then another 15 to 25 secondary sites, which also are village owned property, but are currently, you know, mowed clean or maybe with a couple of trees on it that we could um, challenge neighborhood associations or churches or scout groups or you know uh, apartment complexes to sponsor or get activated and and try to so if we can we're basically building an image of what we could see the village looking like through the primary village owned sites along the waterways secondary sites which could be sponsored by neighborhoods specifically or churches and then, and then we're the third and probably more challenging will be a business challenge to try and look to engage business owners, especially those that have properties that abut the rivers and, and have, you know, and many of them are landscaping companies, which is a whole nother, you know, can of worms. But, um, but the grant was submitted this afternoon and, you know, wish us luck. We have the plans, we have the ideas, we have, you know, a budget, we have sponsorship. Thank you, Ellen. And, you know, we have uh, invested because it's also sponsored by Toyota. We have local on the ground, you know, businesses that are willing to get started with us. And so if we get, I think it's, I don't think we could have made a better case. And I believe that it's a one month period from tomorrow that we will find out if we then would be one of the, one of the entities that's allowed to submit a formal request so that we have a letter in, of intent in today. So in one month, we'll know if we have another one month sprint to get to the submission. Congratulations, Christy. Wow. So I, I'd, like to just, I'd like to just add to that. First, yeah. I really wanna right. thank you, Christy and Kate and, and Renee and Mandy for really unearthing this grant. Um, this has been an amazing, amazing effort. And I think whether we get the invitation to apply for the grant, and if we do, even if we get the grant, regardless, I think that we have such a great roadmap now yeah. to, um, to do something where we could, I mean, sort of the end game is to, you know, help mitigate flooding from the rivers and actually make the rivers this a beautiful amenity for the village. Where right now <laughs> in some of these areas, it's really an eyesore. There's a lot of litter, there's a lot of um, just invasives that are just overgrown and it's not a place that anybody would ever think to just go. Um, so based on this very carefully mapped out plan, these could be, you know, really, the whole thing could be extremely transformative for the village. 
particularly in areas of our village that, um, you know, are the lower income neighborhoods. And it could just provide a, a beautiful facelift, playing up the beauty, the natural beauty of the, of the river. So, uh, you know, I really, really, really applaud um, the effort. It, it's, it was amazing. And I mean, the, you know, when I think about a letter of intent, it's not a, it means a 10 page document. So it's, it's you know, it, it's, it was quite an effort. And we fortunate in the village to have um, a consulting firm to help us with grants. So we, um, we took advantage of that and um, Dan Sarnoff has been extremely um, supportive, which is great. So fingers crossed, we'll get it. I, I think that, yeah, I think that the case is really strong, right? I mean, yeah, I don't know who else is gonna be applying for it. And the really interesting thing, Lou, I don't know if you know this, but so Toyota is sponsoring this grant and just so yeah. happens that on the South end of this zone that was mapped out is the Toyota service station and on the north end is the dealership and it's owned by um this guy that i actually spoke to he couldn't have been more supportive more enthused about the entire thing so that was really nice um that we're sort of in a, in a toyota <laughs> um you know yes yeah marketplace <laughs> and um so yeah it'll be really exciting to see if that if that comes about and um i'm just going to segue into another genius idea that sort of Mandy brought to our attention, um, which is having our mayor sign um, the mayor's monarch pledge, which is um, from the National Wildlife Federation. And Mandy, I'll let you talk about that. But I think that that was a great thing to bring and just really timing was so great, right? Because it's like, I think just to be able to put that in the LOI just shows our commitment. Um, oh, it went in, that's great. Yeah, yeah, that was mentioned. Oh, that's what, good. What kind of pledge is that? Uh, monarch, the monarch Just butterfly. Oh, oh, great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically it's just stating in lots of lingo, but um, it just says that the mayor is going to work on actionable items that um, will raise awareness to our residents about the monarch caterpillar butterfly, its host plants, and planting pollinator gardens to support its life cycle. Wonderful. So, um, yeah, so we're signed. Actually, I, I looked on it. I think I told you, Ellen, I think we're only one of five total towns in New York that actually signed it. So, hey. <laughs> right. So I know the mayor of Porchester, the mayor of Peekskill, right. and the mayor of Manhasset on Long Island have signed. Right. I mean, there is a map um, which I can forward around and you could see nationwide all the mayors that have signed. But yeah, New York. You know, is it's nice that we're name. sort of. An, early signer in, yeah. in New York. And they York have until the end of March. I don't know if it's helpful if we tell Larchmont or other towns to do it too, or, you know. I mean, Elizabeth, you may want to bring this to Larchmont. I mean, sure. basically there's a requirement to take three actions per year. So that it is sort of prescribed of, it's not just signing a pledge, it's committing to, as Mandy said, do some certain actions, some you know, community engagement, other, you know, actually yeah. doing plantings. Um, but these are things that we'd want to do anyway. Right. Yeah. And Absolutely. they, and they make it simple because they're, they give you ideas. You don't have to conjure it up yourself, which is nice. So, um, but yeah, so we have to come up with about three things that we're going to try to do. I think Ellen and I were talking about doing a Zoom event, um, potentially maybe with the library, about a book or uh, like maybe a monarch book, or um, it could also be Monarch Watch. I've been in touch with them because they're sending me some information. They're an organization that supports monarchs. They have tons of you know folks who could speak forever on it. And then I was talking to um, a publisher today who's sending us books to donate one to the library and then also give away at the Clean and Green event. And they're Monarch based books. That's what I've been trying to get. And he actually sent me a copy of the book. It's all about the life cycle of the Monarch butterfly. And it made me think that we should do a Zoom with that offer, uh, author for kids. Um, it's so simple. The Girl Scouts would love it. I mean, we could offer it to PTAs. Anyway, that's that's just like a whole other thought, but um, that's one something educational online. Two, I think seed giveaway. I have tons of seed. We'll be getting tons of seeds. We could do that at the Clean and Green event, um, just to encourage planting native plants. 
Um, I think we're also getting milkweed seed too um, from Monarch Watch. And then crazy enough, uh, do you guys know the little libraries, the little leave a book, take a book libraries? Um, I sent Ellen a, a seed library that I saw online and I thought it was such a clever idea. So maybe we can do a mini uh, take a seed packet, leave a seed packet. Um, I think a lot of people, at least in my Facebook group, I live in another world where all these people who garden write each other. I mean, and we talk, I, I've given away so many seeds to people. I just leave them at my front gate and everyone comes to get them. So it'll be nice to have it somewhere. And it would also cover something that we're doing for the Monarch Pledge. So that's all I have about that. <laughs> Can I just jump in real quick and say that whatever you do, if you consider doing it jointly with the, lar the Large Plant Library, they do stuff together, as you know, Mandy, all the time, mm -hmm. that if you even broaden the base and you still yeah. get to meet your criteria for your, um, um, you know, your three yeah, things it would, the monarchs. It would definitely broaden the, I feel like if we bring anyone online, we're going to want to publicize it so we get enough attendees that they feel like, yeah, I agree. Exactly. Um, so that's it. All right, thank you. Go monarchs. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good stuff. By the way, I'm gonna. You you told me to read some book. What what is that called? Oh, um, butter uh, bi bicycling with butterflies. Right, I'm planning to read that next week when I'm away. So yeah, it's it's a memoir. Um, I did read some reviews and they said, you know, she she talks about her cycling experience where she basically does the route of where the monarchs migrate to and she talks about the experience it had some like a claim i don't know much about the book i should read it too but um i'll let you know yeah let me know if it's worth it okay. before I, they are sending they were like the quietest of the publishers they're sending us two books but everyone else is like i'll send you a box i'm like okay oh. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to see <laughs> so we'll see great well thank you um, Elizabeth, thank you for joining us. You're welcome to stay. No, I'm probably going to say bye, but this was fantastic. And I just want to say the more we can do it throughout our communities and even the neighboring communities, the more of a pathway it becomes. It's very exciting. Thank, thank you. you for inviting me. This was well, great. We'll, we'll certainly keep you posted on, on this grant and whatever Please else. Please do. And, and if we as a group can help you in any way, Ellen and um, Christy and all of you who are working on that, just think of anything and we'll tell you if we can meet the demand because th that this is one of the things that we like to do is you know latch on to other programs where they have a need and then come in and supply the need that we if we can perfect thank okay. you thank you bye-bye thanks, thanks, thanks for coming elizabeth thank you bye-bye bye thank you <laughs> okay um i'm gonna save i'm not going to go in order of our agenda tonight because i want to save the goal setting for the end but um what i want to talk about next is our um clean and green lou i don't know if you've ever been to a village clean and green um, no i have not okay so basically um it's we used to only have it in the spring and it's been going on for years and years and years and then this past year we decided to also have a fall clean and green so basically we all meet up at the harbor and then we have zones, cleanup zones, and people sign up online and they sort of fan out to different zones. Um, right. we, we have help from the Parks Department, DPW, um, and it's always really a great sort of community day where people come out. We get a lot of volunteers. We get a lot of students needing service hours, um, you know, the Troops, Lions Club, and um, it's just a nice family day. And in the, the past... Um, um, the, rivers, we, the rivers in the flood zone could use a lot of attention. Absolutely. So, you know, we try to tailor, like, I'd say years ago, we just did waterfronts. And then a couple of years ago, we decided to open it up and do some more, include more neighborhoods that we saw that were having mm -hmm. a lot of litter. And that's why we had a fall event, because after Ida, we just felt like there was just so much litter. And um, yeah, so we um, tried to focus on some of the waterways. And I, I just want to set a date. Um, so everybody has it in their calendar and then we could start, you know, we, we try to get, you know, a flyer made up and, and get signage going and all of that. So we do need to get something going. And we, um, I think we've done well when we've had it in early May, cause it's a little warmer and we're not competing with all the other Earth Day 
like for example, I guess Lodge Fund just said they're having the Earth Day event on the 23rd. So yeah, uh, the date that I, I think was it, thinking, Sorry, I was, was gonna say oh, definitely go ahead. don't compete. No, I was gonna say definitely don't compete with Earth Day because there's so many other gardening type there, things. There's a lot of there's a lot of other things going on. Yeah. yeah. So um because we do a lot of cleanup <clears throat> around the waterways, we have to check the tides. So I check with Dan Natchez on the on the tides and looks like the best weekend for May would be um what the best day is May 7th, which is a Saturday. The only thing is we usually have a rain date the following day and the following date is Mother's Day. Um, <laughs> as a, but you know, it, it is the morning. We do it from usually 9.30 until like 11.30. So I don't know. I, I think that personally, I don't think that that's that big of a deal. I, I mean, Mandy, you're a young mom. I mean, my kids are older. Um, it wouldn't bother me because usually we would do more of a dinner. It wouldn't bother me. I don't, I don't know. We're not like huge Mother's Day people. Yeah. I mean, it's a I, nice family activity to do with yeah, your kid. I would take my son. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and just the way the tides are, it really Crazy. is. Yeah. Well, um, so you're, you're, you're concentrating on the, on the shoreline then if you're worried about the mm -hmm. tides or. Well, so that's a big part of it. It's not the only part of it, but there are parts that we do like at the harbor, we do the shoreline, we do along the rivers. So we, we do that whole like stretch around like the West Basin mm -hmm. at the harbor and on the other side. So yeah, so if if it's high tide, it's just sort of hard to, yeah. to do a great cleanup. Um, I, I know I'm just the liaison here, but, but seeing we just had this devastating flood wouldn't it perhaps make sense just to, to, to you know, focus the energy uh, where there's there's so much debris uh, and 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 trash? I mean, uh, maybe that's the, a thought. The sad part is, is that it starts in the river and then it flows into the sound and washes up on the beach because the the tide pushes it back and forth. So it's basically you know kind of recirculates a little bit. Oh, all right. I mean, Lou, just to be clear, so I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think in the we've had 12 or so zones where people fan out to. So some of them are in parks, like we've had Florence Park, we've had Warren Park, we've had Phillips, um, you know, Phillips, Phillips Park, which is by the, um, mm -hmm. by the river. But absolutely, we should focus by the rivers. There's no question about it. And I just... In connection with this grant, walked like three miles of Christy and Kate and Renee, and couldn't believe the amount of litter I saw. So you know this thing called the Rockland Pocket, we need to cover that. Like I think that we could certainly add zones, and and we're able to get like two hundred or so volunteers. We get a lot of volunteers right. for this event. Where's the Rockland Pocket? Where is that? So it's on the corner of Rockland, Rockland Avenue, and, and uh, it's Harmon yeah. turns into Waverly. Okay. And Fayette, it's the corner of Fayette and Rockland, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. The so industrial, a, it's the industrial zone there, right? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chimney and yeah, Toyota Mr. dealer. Chimney. And but it 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 um butts onto the freeway, the throughway, and I think it has the Sheldrake River running through it. Correct. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Do we so, have to uh, worry uh, about it being steep over there though and, and putting volunteers where it's a little, because that, I don't know, when I walked with Christy, I mean, that was one thing that we did say is that some of those areas are not places that you'd want to put a teenager or anyone to clean up. Well, that was, I think, the other issue with doing the rivers previously has been that it, you know, the sort of, I don't know, risk factor. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's the other thing about but the I don't think it's doing any... it that late is all the poison ivy will be up. Mm. That. But I don't think it's any um, any sort of riskier than doing all along the harbor, right? I mean, people climb down that rock wall around the harbor to get the stuff out at low tide. That's yeah. true. That's slippery there. We've never had, yeah, it's and we've never had any problems with people doing that. I don't know. I I thought that um, you know the rock and pop. <laughs> They need cleaning up and all along the Sheldrake there, all the way along that um, industrial, the backs of all of those buildings. There's so much garbage there. 
It's terrible. A huge team there for hours. Absolutely. And if for you, hours. If you let <laughs> yeah. those folks know um, in that neighborhood there, I think you'll get some new uh, participation. I mean, because they're very they're very focused on uh, on uh, on their neighborhood. My neighborhood, or the I live I live over there, not like in the industrial area. I live like near off of Harmon, but uh -huh. I randomly wrote about I think it was about fifteen businesses in that area before our last cleanup, and not one person emailed me back. No. Uh -huh. And not to say that there aren't, I think there's at least a hundred plus businesses in that area, but I do think maybe an official reach out on letterhead might shake some of them to come on a Saturday and clean up where they park their cars and eat their lunch. I don't, you know, I feel like they really should be a part of the cleanup over there. I was thinking, I was thinking more of the residents, the, uh, the folks, uh, uh, Washingtonville, you mean? Yeah, Washington, oh. where they complain about the about people cutting through with the traffic and all that. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Washingtonville is in great need of cleanup, too. I walked yeah. through there and, you know, the amount of glass on the sidewalks and, you know, I think uh, engaging the Community Resource Center for Washingtonville is mm -hmm. is something that we can certainly do. But I think that um, a business reach out in the industrial area. I mean, we have an industrial revitalization committee, I understand. And I think that... Um, maybe revitalization isn't the right word, but uh, an industrial committee um, centrally focused on what's going to happen there and, and engaging them and maybe the Mason because they're smack dab in the middle of it all. I think, mm -hmm. um, not smack dab, but they're on the corner. But I think Mandy's not wrong. If there was some higher ranking than random person mm -hmm. emailing them, um, it would help potentially motivate if we said, I mean, I don't know if there's any carrots we can offer, but what you did was offer wear your business shirts, have your staff right. come and clean up the area where you park your cars and eat your lunch and throw your beer cans, um, but wear your shirts. And then all of these other hundreds of volunteers will know that you guys care about the environment and maybe they'll hire you to do their landscaping. <laughs> or something, or. Well, there's a, I mean, there's substantial landscaping. Annex. Yeah, that. there's so many. There's it's endless. I don't even know if there's a list of all those companies. There's so many. Yeah, I well, just take know, pictures. Of is, when, is when we get our flyer <laughs> is to distribute it in that area to sort of walk around and distribute it or try to email it around. Um, I mean, I'm not concerned about number of volunteers. We get a lot of volunteers for this event, but I agree that it'd be nice to have sort of buy-in from people that actually live and work in that area. And by the way, on the weekend there, it's a little bit of a ghost town, you know. It's it's very hard to clean in front of a, sorry. It's very hard to clean in front of a business. You know, when we, when I did the cleanup and I was standing in front of the modern on the rails, I was like, why am I cleaning up trash in front of their building? Uh, and I would feel the same way the industrial area. Like, why am I on your street corner picking up your trash? Because mm -hmm. not that it's yours, but it's right in your front yard you know oh no it's it is theirs because they all eat lunch over there and that's what there's endless 40 ounce beer bottles down that hill into the river because i guess after work everyone just hangs out there's no garbage pails either i mean that could also be another thing well, that's that is another thing and the same could be said by tompkins bridge hmm. probably so many places well al along with this maybe it requires an awareness campaign for these businesses just to tell them put garbage cans out, or ask them to put garbage cans out and alert them to this effort yeah. and yeah. alan i just want david brought it up uh, i think the last time but there seems to be a lot of effort at harbor island but the village kind of does a lot of the cleanup there so maybe we could limit some of the numbers of groups at, at harbor island because i think people stay because it's easy because they're yeah, there yeah. already and spread people out more in uh, in different you know different areas. Yeah. So we limited the number yeah. down there. I agree I think we should. Yeah, I don't think we should let people sign up for it. To be honest, I feel like it should be like the like you don't have somewhere to go today. That'll be the last place that gets assigned. But that's just right. my opinion. I feel like there's so many other things to assign rather yeah. than. And the Marine Education Center does a weekly cleanup at the harbor. So yes. Um, you know, it's a lot of area to cover, but I, I agree with you. I think based on, you know, what I saw, 
recently and in the fall, I do think we need to reconfigure the numbers that are going out to each different section. Like we had too many people coming into Orienta. It just wasn't enough really. Right. Um, and I think we need to be more specific with you know the streets. So, you know, we're perfecting would this it, event. Yeah. Would it be crazy? Who said about dangling a carrot in front of the businesses? What if we propose that they organize their own team and then we do like a, a challenge, like whatever team, because we always have trouble getting captains too, but like whatever zone team gets the most amount of trash bags, you know, we have a some something. I don't know what. I could, seeds. Yeah, seeds. <laughs> like that's what they need. <laughs> they were like, nice, very nice. Yeah. But not, I don't know. I maybe not bear from Harbor Island. I mean from Halftime. <clears throat> Maybe the prize would not be beer cans from halftime. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the Better Business that, um... Bureau? Do they have, you know, is there a representation in the Better Business Bureau in the community? Wait, wait, you mean the Chamber of Commerce? Well, no, I feel like I might be using the wrong word then. Um, Chamber of Commerce is what you're talking about. What's that? The Chamber of Chamber Commerce is what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, the, the Marinec has one, but who knows how many of those businesses are even in the Chamber of Commerce? Well, it's a lot. Well, I, just, I went to the meeting uh, last week, and it was uh, uh, they had they had a full house. I mean, people are, uh, and it was all about the flood. All about the flood. That's the only thing anybody wants to talk about. So, mm -hmm. um, I, 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 if you want my advice, I mean, I'm just a view liaison. I'd, I'd make it all about the flood cleanup. Well, it, 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 it is in tandem with that, because the thing that we've been discovering as we've been doing research about these pollinator gardens is that you start with invasive species and the invasive species become so dominant that they capture trash. The trash is caught in the weeds. And then what happens, and Kate knew this, and I had no idea, as you, as you come across the trash in the weeds, the water slows down. When the water slows down, the sediment starts to fall. You get buildup of sediment, you get rising waters. It's all a compounding issue. So- mm -hmm. If they care about flooding, they should come help get weeds and trash out of the river. Mm. Okay. Well, that's the way to market the, that to them. Um, yeah, rather than just being good stewards of the community. I guess my thought is, you know, a lot of these people don't live here. Will they be bothered to come back on a Saturday or a Sunday? Mm -hmm. No, and it's a ghost town over, if we're talking about the industrial area, it's a ghost town on the weekends. I, I don't know why you're focused on businesses and not residents. Well, I, I no, I mean, there's plenty of residents, but I also think there's only so many ways that you can find a resident who will care about it, you know, and they either subscribe to the newsletter for Village of Mamaroneck or, right. or they don't. I mean, if someone's not involved, I don't know how to find new people that, you know. Well, as I've said, we don't have problems getting volunteers. We will get a good right. turnout. So that's that's not a concern at all. I guess, you know, it, it's what we're saying is we'll get volunteers. There's no question about that. But do we feel like the people that sort of are creating the mess should help clean it up? <laughs> I mean, you know, what would be nice if there was some sort of maintenance, like once you sort of get it to a livable um, state of affairs that, you know, you just hope that they'll maintain it. And I think we do need to put trash cans in these areas. I mean, we just saw that it was like a wasteland over there. But um, for now, I think that we should just set the date and we can have like a sub planning committee. I know Mandy's already sourced a lot of sort of her seeds to give away and some coffee table books, which is always nice. We've raffled things off just to sort of create some excitement. And um, Ellen, what was the date that you had proposed? May 7th, May 7th. May 7th. Okay, so low tide is at 1040 in the right. morning that right. day and exactly. at 1135 on the Sunday following. Right. So, so if you look at the following weekend and the following weekend, it's much it's much later in the day. Yeah, 430. Yeah, yeah. 430 and 5, 530. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, you know, ideally, Renee it would be like a 10 a.m. But yeah, it just wasn't. So that works on the 7th. So I think the seventh is a good date. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry I'm off camera because I'm trying to have some dinner. Um, I, I do think there's a little bit of peer pressure when it comes to Mother's Day. 
maybe I'm not trying to be weird, but you know, sometimes moms want pancakes and bed or whatever, but is the 30th, what does the 30th look like? What? That's I'm Memorial gonna... Day weekend. Oh, forget oh. it then. Uh, April 30th? No. No, May. not April 30th. May April 30th. When is Earth this year? 20, what is it? 24th? I always forget. 24th. I feel like there was a reason we weren't doing the April 30th. I don't know. The Rye Sustainability Cleanup this year is on the 23rd. Mm. 23rd of? Of April. April. So that's Earth Day. Yeah. Um, you want to check the ties for April 30th? Um, I've got, so later on in May, just while I've got May up here. Um, okay. The, um, the 21st of May works that the tides work it's like at 10 50 in the morning is low tide so that that is that the 21st of may is not memorial day weekend right no no, no. okay so that's a possibility but if you wanted to go earlier um, then 1230. Yeah, that's it's a bit late on the 23rd, 24th, but on the and it's really late. Oh, no, it's really early. Sorry. <laughs> on the 30th. It's like at six in the morning and six at night. That's why and the, the 14th is a, the 14th. The tides are don't co coincide, right? 14th of, of May. Eight, uh, May. Oh, yeah, but, hang on. On uh, the fourteenth of May, yeah, it's it's late. It's four thirty okay. in the afternoon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Too late. I mean, it might not rain, and <laughs> you know, many moms might not be bothered. I just don't know. <laughs> I think you would have a lower turnout for sure on Mother's Day. I would think. But that's only the rain date, right? Like we would yeah. be aiming for that's the sun. Can we make the rain date uh, like another Saturday? Only because I'm thinking also like some of the high school kids who are there for community service, their parents might pull like, uh, where are you going? I don't know. I, I don't, you know, everyone has different levels of Mother's Day. Yeah. Um. My vote would be for May 7th and then we see what happens. You know, it's not an entire day. We're talking about two hours and right. it can even be less for some people. They can just come out. Um, you know, the, the profile of who we tend to have out there are parents with their kids or high schoolers out there getting community service hours. So I, I'm not really seeing a huge conflict personally. So what time? Uh, 9 30 or 10 until yeah. like 11 30. Yeah, 9 30 would probably work. Yeah. Low tides at 10 30. So, yeah. And, you know, in years past, pre COVID, we would have the schooner come which is a really nice thing for young kids. I don't know if anybody has been there with the schooner. Mm -hmm. We haven't had it in two years. One year, I think it was a COVID, and one was the bad weather. Um, like the, the waters were too choppy, but it's this um, schooner comes from, I think Stamp, somewhere up in Connecticut, super nice guy. And they have everybody come on board and they you know, give a little presentation for the kids, which is really a nice thing. And I could reach out to see if they'll come this year. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, uh, the shredding mobile is not available on that date. <laughs> we were talking about having the shredder again. And, you know, we could always make it, you know, more festive or less. We could focus on the cleanup. We could try to, you know, add other things onto it if we wanted. So we could all just give that some thought. So it's about 10 to 11.30, is that about? Is that it about? Let's put it 9.30 to 11.30. We usually gather at the harbor. Um, is usually, um, you know, check in, some opening remarks, all that, and then people fan out to the different cleanup zones. They get their supplies. Um, so 
one of the things that um, Krista, you put forth, I think at our last meeting was wanting to have a litter awareness campaign. And boy, after that walk you and I took, I'm like, we certainly need to have that in this village. So that could be, the clean and green could be sort of a good kickoff for that. Um, and what we're envisioning, Lou, is, you know, having an awareness campaign such that there's, you know, signage maybe when you get off of 95 on Fenimore, there's, you know, a sign, like we have a catch, a nice catchphrase, which we haven't agreed to yet, but we've sort of, I guess, um, bandied about a few ideas, but we haven't landed on an idea yet. But, you know, some catchy catchphrase, you know, like a keep America beautiful kind of thing for, for Mamaronek. And it's something that will just become sort of part and parcel of the village. We'll have signage, we'll have messaging, social media messaging. And I think it's not just about that one day cleanup, but it's about just not littering. Yeah, I mean, don't, I, don't I was just with... as astounded at the amount of litter that I have seen in this village. It's it's really upsetting. Uh, I Just last night we were talking about it and they were, I don't want to give uh, illicit support for my, my ideas, but uh, uh, I was after them to pressure to, to focus our, our enforcement efforts on the things we're trying to correct. And I would love to see active enforcement of littering, active enforcement of not picking up after your dog, after enforcement of, of, uh, of whatever it is we're trying to correct, and not just all these things you can't do, and then people do them anyway, which is what, what we have now. We have a lot of signs and no, no compliance. And uh, so... If you're interested in the letter, please attend the, the, the board meetings and let them know about it. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that, you know, it's, I always like to sort of approach it with sort of a, a fun spirit to begin with, you know, education, messaging, all that. But to, to your point, at some point, you need to give out fines and enforce it because these are quality of life matters. I mean, we were, we were walking and we saw this you know, no litter sign, $250 fine. And it was like tons of litter all around the sign. Yeah. It was almost like a joke, but it's, and we need to have sort of nice receptacles that people notice and will use. So that's, that's part of it. I mean, people I, are- I you know, Columbus Park, at Columbus Park, they just, we just got all new receptacles. So it's- a, it was, Oh, is that right? Yes, just, so oh. I just, that's where I live. So I know, I noticed it. Okay. That's cool. Good. Good, good. Just out of curiosity, was uh, during the meeting where you were talking about the littering, was the graffiti mentioned at all? No. No. No, they were focused on, I don't want, they were focused on pot smoking. Hmm. Okay. That, that's that is, uh, like, uh, they wanted to they, they, they include pot smoking with, do you, you, you know what's illegal to smoke in, in a park at all? I did not know that. Nobody seems to know it, but that that's that's the law. So now it's illegal to yeah. smoke pot too, but they won't enforce it. They can't force that either. I, I don't know. So I guess uh, they're not opening a dispensary anytime soon in my marinade. Then. <laughs> I'm, new. I'm new. I'm yes, new. Just a joke. <laughs> There's a second smoke shop though now. There's two. Hmm. There is? With hookahs and you know. Where's but the second one? But they don't sell marijuana. We may be off the environment here. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. That's good. It's green in some yeah. form or another. Yeah. Well, if we so could just bin the graffiti but, with the yeah. litter, that would be great because there's a really big graffiti problem over. Uh, it's on Rockland, that bridge that goes over the um, the train. Right. It's it's your government. Way in. Way yeah. in. Right. I don't know. My husband won't let me complain about anything else. I'm already asking for sidewalks over there. I am not allowed to be that girl. So here be I am. It. Come on, be it. I probably will be. I was one step. It's too cold to go take pictures. I'll go take pictures tomorrow. But yeah, we shouldn't have community. Yeah, you know, we don't want to have graffiti where we live. Uh, no. If it were on the Maranac Avenue, they would clean it up every single day. But it's over yeah. where they don't think anyone cares. So. So if anybody has a creative mind or knows people that are creative, let's just try to come up with a slogan 
And let's try to launch the litter um, awareness campaign with the clean and green. I think that would be really fun. And we'll get some nice signage. I think that we could have it. Um, I, I like the idea of it, you know, with that M1 sign is as you come off the exit. And um, I think it just sets a message for our village that, you know, uh, we don't want litter here. And um, what if, if it was like a sign with some kind of saying, but also like a tie in with a logo, a logo with like a, like a logo of, you know, like a crab underneath some trash or something, since we're so tied into water. Yeah. Something, I, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't, I yeah, can't. I think a really cute graphic that's just identifiable and like we're you. killing our crabs <laughs> or something like that. Well, a, if, big, like, kids, a big anti-litter campaign, uh, campaign is don't mess with Texas. That if you, if you ever go to Texas, that's their anti-litter campaign. Yeah. Don't mess with Mamaroneck is uh, has more alliteration, you know, and so. Yeah, but I, yeah that's a good one. I, I was thinking uh, Mamaroneck mines litter, right? It's yeah. nice to have the alliteration or something like catchy. So yeah, we could, we should sort of circulate a list of ideas. And then at the end, we could just sort of vote on what people think. But yeah, I, I don't know if I want to steal from Texas of all places, but um yeah. <laughs> we could why not it's not all that. bad it's not all bad it's, if it's effective i feel like it has to be catchy that kids are gonna know what it is yeah that, that's a cute it's cute yeah it also has to translate mm -hmm. to yeah i also think that we should maybe involve kyle uh since maybe since she does that cleanup every week maybe we can ask her that she could kind of hit home and use whatever logo we come up with that she's supporting it because she does a weekly cleanup yeah just a thought no yeah. absolutely i mean with anything we should always involve all of our partners the crc kyle you know elizabeth anybody that we um think could amplify our message i think is great um so i know that kate uh, went to Cancun today, which is great. And I know she's going to try to come on the call, but I, I guess she wasn't able to. So I'm going to pass over the conversation about river maintenance, but I think we did sort of cover that. Um, Lou, I don't know if you're aware of the whole clean energy communities initiative that we have going, but you're welcome to join us. We So this is a sort of a, a subset of this committee, but it's an official task force that we have set up via resolution mm -hmm. that the board passed um, last July. And we're having our second meeting on March 1st. Is this um, the aggregate energy program? Is that the... So this is, these are New York state programs uh -huh. and they're basically initiatives for municipalities, um, actions that they can take to reduce carbon emissions to help mm -hmm. the state reach its carbon reduction goals. That's sort of, you know, it's just sort of boiling it down in a nutshell, but they're fairly complex programs with many, many different actions and initiatives that municipalities can take. And it's, um, you know, there's like a point system to sort of incentivize municipalities. If you collect enough points doing certain things, you could actually get grants. Last year, we earned $10,000 in grants. So we have some ideas that we wanna pursue for 2022. And the March first is sort of our kickoff meeting uh, for the year. I would, I would, I would be very interested in that. That is my, that is my passion. Oh, so that's great. So I will keep you in the loop on that. Jerry Bar uh, Barbario is on our committee, mm -hmm. and um, and we're still looking for somebody, a resident, who sort of has, you know, green building or engineering know-how. I think that would be a positive. Um, I guess, person to have, which we haven't really filled that position. Um, and, I, and I could send you a ton of information if you wanna know sort of more about it. it. It does take time to really delve into it. It's a lot there, but as I said, you know, these are programs to help villages and towns do things like the things we've done already, for example, like the town has ch transitioned to all LED bulbs for its outdoor lighting. Mm -hmm. um, we use the, um, the Westchester Power Program. Mm -hmm. um, EV charging stations. Like these are all things that help under this program. We we ran community campaigns last year for community solar and an app called Grid Rewards, which incentivizes people during peak 
um, energy demand to sort of not use that much energy. And it was sort of like a, an app that helps you gamify reducing your energy. And then you get a check at the end of the year for how much you reduce your energy. I actually got $140, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a simple app on your phone and it's actually really easy. Uh, so this year we want to do um, a few things. One is the New York stretch code, which is basically um, a building code. Um, and then a unified solar permit, which just really streamlines the permitting process for people to put solar on their roof. And we also want to become a designated climate smart community, which we have to check a few more boxes until we could actually have that designation and that credential. So yeah, so please join us for that. I think that would be um, really great to have you. You know, I, I, I wonder if, if there's a way, and I don't know if they're incompatible, perhaps they are, if there was a, a way to combine a pollinator pathway project with a solar farm. You know, I guess you could plant a lot of flowers around solar panels or something, I don't know. That's cool, I, I, I yeah, I mean, you. I think you could have pollinators almost anywhere. Yeah. If you plant the right stuff. Right. They just want flowers. I don't I would have to read to see if the solar panels do anything to them, but they really just look oh. for flowers. The cash oh, shape, I guess, is probably be the worst if they take up the sun. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, one of the one of the things that gets points is to have solar panels on village property. So we've been yeah. kind of thinking about is there a building over a parking lot? You know, we, we haven't come up with we haven't come up with the place, but the location. But well, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, well, we're getting ready to do a whole a whole bunch of stuff to the old village hall, which we found out is in terrible shape. We got to drop two and a half million dollars on it to to um, uh, make it safe to, to work in. Uh, so um, that happened last night. So maybe we could look at doing something while while we're fixing it up uh, and get mm -hmm. something on the roof. And the um, uh, you know, I happen to know a little bit about this because I have a radio show in Rockland County with, that deals with the climate uh, uh, and. Uh, Clarkstown is 90,000 people. It's a big town up there. They just, uh, did, they just did a whole bunch of this stuff. And that's, uh, you know, and that's, that's not a particularly pro progressive area. So these things can all happen. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, Lou, um, where is the, um, sorry, quick question. Where is the old village hall? Uh, uh, the old village hall is a police station in the, in the courthouse. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. It, it's, it's, in dire need. it's horrible yeah, yeah. It, it's got mold in it it's it, it's just a mess we, we we have a there's an emergency order to to uh, to clean it up so we we, we uh -huh. were dealt with that last uh, last night i mean I do you know if they're gonna... part, part of that roof is um protected by the historical society is that is that no and thank god it isn't thank god it isn't because uh, it would cost us a mint that other building we uh, uh on stanley is it it's costing us an extra 80 grand for uh, windows because it's got, got a historical designation. Hmm. Yeah, so. No, it's, it's not designated historic, historic and, 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 and trust me, <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah, and I don't know why I heard that somewhere. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe and, you do, maybe you do want it. I don't, I don't want uh, to. So, so Dan, maybe that would be a good candidate. Mm -hmm. Well, are they, are they rehabilitating the existing building? I, you know, I listen. I, I, the, 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 it's it's an emergency. Um, uh, the uh, um, uh, the police chief got sick with um, with some kind of mold issue, and 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 the place looks like a dump, and uh, uh, and needs to be fixed. Uh, it's they're way behind on it. So um, they they need they need to put money in it just to make it safe to work. And we have eighty employees in there. We can't ask them to work in a in a place like that. Wow. And um, uh, if if we're doing this, we could perhaps, you know, but you could bring it up, we could perhaps tack on um, uh, something from a grant or something because the staff is finding truckloads of grant money all over the place. So, so the money's coming in the front door. And, uh, and if we, if, if it's written up right, we could, we could put solar panels on that roof, I would imagine. <laughs> I mean, I'm not speaking for the board, I'm just talking to you. And um, is there something you'd like me to bring back to the board? Well, I think that, you know, the Homics Ice Rink put solar panels on top of that. Are you aware of that? Um, uh, I was not, no. Okay, so there's a program called Community Solar. Mm -hmm. 
And it's basically solar farms that developers come and develop, and then they sign up residents and they get their solar power from those solar farms. Mm -hmm. And um, and to Dan's point, through these um, New York State programs, the municipalities do get advantages, and you get rent, right? I mean, you, if, if we're the landlord of a solar farm, it's there's an economic benefit to us. So if you're sitting at the table and they're talking about putting on a new roof, we should definitely have the conversation of, well, hey, is this an opportunity to get a developer in and put solar on that roof? I mean, I don't know if that roof gets enough sun. I don't know if it's big enough. I have no idea, but it's certainly I, I worth a conversation. In, in Clarkstown, and, that's, and those are Republicans up there, they're they're putting their own solar panels on the roof and they're selling the uh, energy back to um, Orange right. and Rockland. So, I mean, yeah. um, we, we don't, you know, we could do it ourselves. Like I would imagine, I don't want to get too far ahead here. Uh, I'm just here to listen to you and bring stuff back to the, to the board. So, um, okay. But this is, this is exciting stuff. folks. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is. It, it actually, when you delve into the climate smart program, it is actually very exciting. It's, it's very, um, you know, it's, it's like a labyrinth of, of programs and there are two separate programs and there's like a intersection of some different activities, some are mm -hmm. separate, some overlap, but it is really interesting. And it's, you really sort of feel, en you know, energized <laughs> to want to do more and more and more. And, and we were, I was approached, um, I think it was last summer by somebody in Larchmont, I'm forgetting his name right now. And he was asking us, he was involved with the, the project at the Hammocks Ice Rink. And he was asking me if there were any village owned properties, whether it's um, you know at the parks or on, on our roofs to see if we could do that because he knew developers that wanted to develop. Yeah, well, the, the, the building's a problem. The building, they were gonna knock it down a, 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 a years back. Uh, they didn't, they decided to keep it. They're gonna have to try just rescue it now from, from, being, from cr crumbling away. And then um, I think maybe build something close by and then, then maybe gut it. If, I, I don't know what the long range plans are, but it's not, uh, the, it, it's a big, it's a big project. And we're, and, you know, and, and the village offices are over in the regatta and, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't get the feeling anybody wants to stay there. So, uh, you know, we, we, the, the, there's, there's stuff that we got to do. So, uh, uh, and, and this solar, um, initiative can figure into all of it if we if we make sure that it happens as we do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, great. So we can keep talking about that. Thank you. All right. Um, so the village, oh, does the village own the parking lot across the street as well? I, I, believe, so. I think so. I believe yeah. so. Because yeah, that would, you know, in the interim, because the, the whatever is going to happen on the building either now or later or a complete reformation, you know, could complicate and prolong things, but that you know, uh, down in the in the Midwest, where you have open cement spaces that get hot in the summer and have no trees anywhere around them, it would certainly be a good platform for shaded areas. Um, uh, I'm not sure them. what the plans are for that. Hmm. There may be there may be something else in the works. I'm not I'm not sure. Well, regardless, there's probably some village property, some you know, uh, somewhere that we might be able to explore set putting up solar panels like you said even if we just sell it back to uh con ed or nipa or whatever, wherever we get the power from you know and and then and then the, the day the lights go out the day the grid goes down well maybe not all of our lights go out you know that's uh, that's that's something to think about all right What's guys keep us on track here Sorry. we need to keep moving along go ahead um so i think that the huge news really of the past week or two is that our village is going to start picking up food scraps, which is amazing. And um, I'm super excited. Uh, and we've gotten sort of outreach from other communities saying, hey, you know, how'd you do that? We want to do that. So I think we'll have a great ripple effect into um, other communities, which is what you want to see. Uh, we're the third municipality in Westchester after Scarsdale and Rye to do this. So certainly um, an early adopter. And um, so Lou, again, for your just sort of background, we started um, food scrap recycling in the village in 2018. And so we've had this going for a while and it required people to bring their food scraps um, over on, by themselves to 
1313 Fayette, which is, you know, not an easy place to get in and out of. It's a very, I don't know if you've been there. It's just sort of like, it's very narrow. There's a lot of trucks. Um, and it's not a great place for residents to come in and out of. And then about two years ago, these very enterprising students at Rhinec High School started a service for pickup. And they were amazing. I mean, they were really responsible kids and they would come around every week and pick up and bring it over. And at the end of their, um, they, they closed down their service, unfortunately, in December. Um, the two main guys had gone to college, their parents were helping them out. I mean, they couldn't get enough drivers. I mean, it was just like, they did their best for two years, but they had a hundred households in their route. And it was really extraordinary. So I think that really um, put the village in a situation where they needed to act. And there was a huge letter writing campaign, a lot of advocacy, a lot of push by our committee um, to do something. And Jerry, you know, the concern was, are we gonna be put ourselves in a position with the, with the sanitation union? you know, for asking for something new to open up the entire contract and um, will the bills be putting themselves at some disadvantage contractually. So there was a lot of concern around that. And I think um, Jerry came up with a brilliant idea to just, he expanded the definition of what a recyclable item is to include food scraps, which in fact, that's what it is. So on Wednesdays, which is recycle day in the village, there will now be a third pickup so in the morning you'll have you know, your paper and your cardboard, then there'll be the plastic and the glass, and then there'll be a third uh, route for food scraps. Um, it's an opt-in program. Um, people have to call by March 2nd to get on the list. And I guess they're positioning it as a pilot meeting for the first, I think 12 or 13 weeks is free of charge. And then it, they're gonna assess whether there will be a charge. I personally am against the charge. I don't think that it's right. Um, but that's a discussion for another day. I think it's a huge win that we're doing this. There's a lot of excitement. As of today, uh, as of this morning, I checked, there's 105 um, households that have signed up already. So oh, that cool. sees what ASAP had. And um, it's really um, across the village. So it was 49 households in Orienta and Shore Acres combined, 32 in Rhinec, 12 in Heathcote, which includes Washingtonville, and 12 in Harbor Heights. So I am super excited. We're trying to get the word out in every which way. Um, we've been in the local press. I hope everyone's seen, we had an article in the patch. There was a write-up in the loop. Um, we've been out on social media. Mandy is our social media guru. So we had it on Instagram. I did my best on Facebook, Mandy, but you have to help me with that. <laughs> and then today, um, the Orient Point Association put out a blast. Um, Renee, did you see that? I did. Okay. Oh, um, did you yeah, do that? Yeah. That was awesome. I did do it. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and I'm hoping that Shore Acres can send something similar. Right? I sent it over there. If they could send it out over there. Um, so yeah. So I think there's a lot of momentum and excitement around that. And did that anybody was, put it on next door? You know, I've been reluctant to put it on next door because whenever I put it on next door, sometimes it just gets cuckoo crazy over there. <laughs> okay, I was just curious. <laughs> and I just, I, I just don't know, like if I want to deal with that because there's it does always get crazy. Will, I, I don't want to write that to the loonies, but next I'm just thing curious. You know, we'll be talking about like the truck caravan. I don't, it just somehow they mm -hmm. just go <laughs> off the rails and they talk about something. <laughs> I do think the one well, we're talking thing, about like critical race theory. I, I don't know. Yeah. The comments become something else entirely. Yes. But yeah, if you want to put it on, you are more than welcome. Uh, I'm afraid because then I'll have to answer questions or they'll come hunt me down. But the one thing, because a few people have asked me, um, like the missing link is there's not a place on like a website that one can go and get like frequently asked questions. Like where can I, one of my friends asked me, and I would like to know when should I buy something? What does it need to look like? Cause I don't want to sign up without knowing what it needs to be. And I'm what do sure you mean? Mm -hmm. like what? Just the buckets like, like buy a receptacle. Like the containers. I was like, okay, you guys gave me a phone number. What do I do? I don't, I've never done it before. And I feel like there's new people who might be looking at it. Cause honestly, I, I don't know. My friends and I, we don't drop off anything. We have little kids. We don't have time. 
So I would like to participate now, but I don't even know. I'm like, uh, I got to get back. Seen, you haven't seen the food scrap kits, the, the green bins? I have, but I know about them. I don't know if that's the same thing that's going to be on the curb. I didn't know the answer to that question. Yes, it is. But yeah, it is. is. Okay. But I even had a friend who was like, so should I buy something bigger? Like, am I buying it or what, what's happening? But I feel like there's no place where there's answers like that for a person who lives here who's never done this before. Well, the answer is it is on the website. So Robert wrote up, okay. um, I guess it's a press release and it's fairly okay. detailed with all of that. I didn't see um, it. Okay. Happy to send it to you. I could send it to you because I okay. have it. I could send that to everybody if you don't have it. Um, and it's a fairly detailed write up and it is on the it is on the website. And if they call the number, they could also ask questions. Okay. Which is, the, I mean, I was, uh, you know, I like the idea of a, of a, of a sign up on, online, but I think there are benefits to actually call a number because then you could ask a live person all these questions. Yeah, who is, who is it that answers the phone there? What's her name? I think her name is Lisa. Is it Lisa? Shoot. What are, anyway, whoever it was, was super helpful because oh, I said sure. to her, um, I noticed that it says to do not leave this at the end of your drive or your lane or whatever, leave it by your front door. And I was like, are you guys being serious about it? Like, I don't understand why is this different from anything else that we put out? And she said, because Robert, you know, the guy that Robert who helped out in Fayette, like rinses all of the buckets for you and everything, not Robert, is gonna be driving around with the guy who's in charge of the works department, whose name I can't remember. Um, that's who's doing that separate pickup. Yeah. And he is not going to stop at the ends of the lanes. He's gonna drive right up to your house. Because right, and the issue is that they're afraid because they're smaller bins that they may get right. hidden right. by a, a parked car or whatever. So that they're saying that you should put it either on your front porch or it by your, front your walkway. Or your walkway not in the not in the street because it, it could just easily get like my husband's run my my thing over many times in a driveway well our so, garbage cans get run they get run over all the time too so yeah <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah. and mandy just um i'm going to email this to you but just also i have recommended to jerry and i don't know if he's taken action so if you look at the scarsdale website they mm -hmm. offer some larger bins and i do think that we should start selling larger bins but yeah. it is the responsibility of the homeowner to buy their own bins okay. and to put them out. Yeah. Are they telling the homeowners that there is going to potentially be a charge? Um, I think so it was, this is, I'm sorry. Just what? curious. I don't know. I think it was mentioned that it's free for now, but there might be a charge, okay. you know, later. And I think it's in that same. Yeah. This email that Robert sent out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if there's a charge, it's fairly minimal. I think it's like fifty-two dollars a year, so a dollar a week. Um, I mean, I'm going to try to keep lobbying not to have a charge because I think that it. I, I don't want I don't want anyone to sort of be dissuaded from doing this for any reason whatsoever. I mean, I think that we should try to be getting, you know, many people in the program and not have any um, impediments. And frankly, you know, Lou, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, there is a county agreement that subsidizes the tipping fees for food waste. So even though, yes, there's gonna be Fine. maybe extra, you know, extra gas um, costs <laughs> for another round, but it's, the tipping fees are less for food scraps. So I'm not, I, I don't know. And I, I, I think, I think the reason, one of the other reasons that Jerry felt maybe we should have a charge is to make sure people are committed to this because if people are going to make a specific stop to somebody's house, you want to know that, okay, they're going to have their bin out. I'm not yeah. going to be doing this for nothing. It. So it's, it's like, if you're paying for something, even if it's a dollar a week, at least, you know, you feel like you have bought into something. That's it. Exactly. I just yeah. don't want someone not to do this because they just feel like it's an affordability issue. I think that would really be unfortunate. Yeah, the affordability issues, I've had mine in my car for two days because I keep trying to get there and I can't get there because I keep busy. That's what I can't afford is keeping compost in my car. You're driving around so you rotting poop in your car. <laughs> That's not good. Well, it's 14 degrees. It really doesn't work. Oh, yeah, well, I guess you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But what we good can't point. afford is to have to try to take care of it 
by 315 on a business day because it doesn't work. I haven't been able to do it for two days. Did anybody put a flyer at the DPW for people to drop off who, like my neighbors, they're much older. They drop off all the time. I highly doubt they're on like an email or anything. Like, is anyone working in the reverse to tell the people who drop off that it's happening? Robert is doing that. Okay. Yeah, he's, um, I mean, <laughs> he's a, he's, a he? great <laughs> he's, he's, he's so excited about it. I saw him the other day. Uh-huh. And um, so he's telling everybody that comes. Oh, good. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I want to wrap up. I just, you know, Lou, I don't know if you were at a meeting where we talked about goal setting. So we, we did this last year and I think we really had a great year. We really, um, I think we did a lot of what we set out to do. Mm-hmm. And some of these are spillover things that will, you know, ongoing things, but I just want to quickly run through them really mostly for your benefit. And then people on the call, if there's anything, oh, I wish I could screen share. Let me, um, um, hmm. so somebody wants to tell me how to do this. That'd be great. If you move your like Steve, to, a, to share content somewhere move on the, the top of- move your mouse and down at the bottom a bar will pop up and there's a green button that says share screen. Oh, I see that. Let's see. And then what? And then I go to a and you hit share screen and you should be able to show us what's on your desktop. There you go. Hey, oh. how about that? All right. I don't think I've ever done that. Okay. So <laughs> inside it. Um can you move it across? Yeah, move it, yeah. How's that, guys? Keep moving yeah. a little more. Is that uh, good? More, keep moving it more across, Ellen. Yeah, across. The, wait, maybe I'll move you guys. There you go. Keep Is that going. good? Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> all right, all right. Cool. Um, okay, so we've already talked about all the climate smart, clean energy community stuff, so I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, we, this is a spillover from last year. We really want the village, um, Lou, I'm saying this for your benefit mostly, but we've really been, and Dan has been such a champion here to get the village to have more EV charging stations. Right now we have two charging stations in that parking facility across from the dilapidated building that we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, they're sort of hidden from sight. And, you know, I think we really need charging stations in places where people can see them and use them. And it's really, I think we live in a great village that people could be driving, you know, on 95 and see they're getting low and look at their charging maps. Say, oh, let's, you know, stop in the Maranac. I'll have a bite to eat and I'll charge my car. So there's so many, you know, grants and programs out there to take advantage of. So I think we really should try to make this a priority for this year. Um, Jerry has asked us to create a roadmap of locations where we think we should have them throughout the village. So I asked Dan to take care of that and he'll do that. Um, The healthy yard stuff we've all really talked about. Um, I think there's a lot of energy around that um, uh, initiative and I think it's all great. Um, The only thing I'll mention that we haven't talked about is um, to establish an AGZA zone. So AGZA is sort of the, um, uh, I forget what the acronym is right now. But it's basically having like only using electric equipment, quiet equipment, and Larchmont had a ribbon cutting ceremony last year in Kane Park, and they're using that as their AGSA zone. And really, it's great. Um, well, first of all, in that zone, they only will use the electric equipment, but it's, it's great for sort of demonstrations and to sort of make a statement to the community. And I did talk to Jerry about that, and he is, seems to be receptive, and we talked about possibly um, doing that at Gillies Park in Orienta that Ooh, triangle wow. when you come in, Good right? Idea. So that we a cool area, right? You know, just- Yeah, it's so underutilized, that thing. So underutilized. Nothing happens there. <laughs> and nothing happens there. And, and people are driving by there all the time. So you could see if there's like demonstrations going on and, um, and if people are using electric equipment, you know, maybe they'll get some ideas. <laughs> we also so, need okay. to put some pollinator gardens in there, right? There Absolutely. you go. Absolutely. And there's a woman that lives right across from there that has a huge pollinator yeah. garden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ellen, yeah. did we end up buying a an electric using that five thousand dollars towards some form of electric gardening equipment for the village? Or we have we have not we have not used that money at all yet. Um, what I have learned is that um, I think uh, guys from the um, 
the parks department at the end of this month they're going to attend some event at the meadowlands at some turf expo where they get um there's demonstrations and they get to see electrical equipment so i and then Jeff on is doing some two day course on organic turf and property care. So I know that our parks department is focused on trying to um, be more environmentally friendly, which is great. And I'm told that mm -hmm. whatever is purchased going forward will be electric. Okay, um, perfect. Yes. Yeah, but we do need to, we should be spending that money. Absolutely. Um, and then obviously we've talked about food waste recycling. So, you know, our role is doing what we're doing, supporting the program, promoting it, um, community engagement, just always having it at the forefront because I think that the success of this program will really be measured on how many households are enrolled. Um, community outreach, social media. So we're gonna have our uh, fall, less spring and fall clean and green events. We're gonna launch the litter awareness campaign. Uh, we're gonna have a community engagement event, uh, a book club or a film discussion probably around the pollinator pathways as Mandy discussed. Um, and then we'll continue maintaining our um, social media accounts. Uh, river maintenance, this is something that was brought to us by Kate this year, our newest member who couldn't be with us tonight. And um, I think she really opened up our eyes to sort of all the invasives that are getting in the way of our rivers flowing properly and what we could do to create beautiful public space. Um, so we're going to be focused on that. Um, Taylor's Lane will just continue to track developments and keep advocating for some great um, use for that open space. Um, community gardens, um, we um, always just oversee and assign those plots every spring. Renee, you're point person on that this spring, right? And, and then lastly, um, this is really sort of something that David Friedman likes to um, get involved with, but there's a comprehensive plan in the works. Um, it was stalled out because of COVID, like everything else. There is a really good sustainability section in there. Um, so we just want to, you know, keep our toe in that initiative and just encourage and support that that gets completed, hopefully, you know, sooner rather than later. I mean, interestingly, so many things that were proposed in that we've sort of already surpassed um, because with the passage of time. Yeah. So that, that's our goals for the year. And I've tried to sort of show who seemed to be interested, who's expressed interest in different areas, but this is fluid obviously, but I just think that we should keep this as our working document for the year. Anyone have anything on that? Uh, I just have a question, Renee or anyone, is was there ever a plan to expand the community garden? I was just wondering if there was ever a need. I, I finally saw it when I went on a walk with Christy and I, I don't know what I envisioned, but felt like I was going to see this huge garden. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was thinking that, but um, I was I just wondering. Not, I have not heard any plans to expand um, it. I don't know how much space the village actually has there. Um, they, sorry. Did somebody say something? No, okay. Um, yeah, so I have not heard uh, any plans to expand it, but um, I can ask Jeff and, and Jerry. Um, Jeff does the maintenance on it to get it all ready for the residents to start in the spring. Um, and, you know, we can certainly ask Jerry if there's any ability to expand them but I'm not aware of anything. I'm just curious. I didn't even know if there was a need, like if so many more people apply versus what you can actually distribute to residents. I didn't know. Yeah, I know they all got used last year, um, but I didn't get the impression that there was like a huge thundering amount of support or you know, people looking to use one. Got it. I didn't know. I'll let you know if that's not the case because I, I, I haven't, if anybody knows, um, who, was, who was it who did it last year? Hey, David. Oh, David. David. Yeah, so David seems to have gone uh, radio silent on us. And I'm wondering if anybody has a current contact for him. So he's the one who did it last year and I need to get notes from him. And we had been emailing, but he's retired now. And the only email I have is his work email. Mm. And so I think that's why I'm not getting any response from them. 
So if anybody has any contact details for him, I'd appreciate it. Okay. After, after seeing the site, is there anything in specific, I mean, besides potentially more, I mean, is there anything in, it's hard to tell what was in disrepair or what was just off season or, you know, the tequila bottle, I don't think it was part of it, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> Probably not. So yeah, I think, you know, I think what happens is that Jeff's team goes in, they clean it all out so that um, it, it's a fresh start every year. And then we approach the people who actually had, a, you know, the plots last year, we, they, give, they have first right of refusal over those plots for this year. And any open plots we then put out, like we basically have a sign up sheet that, um, that Robert posts and takes care of. So uh, that's kind of how it works, but Robert doesn't have the list of who had the plots last year. Only David does. So only David does? Apparently. So I'm like, okay, good. Well, we need to get that. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Ellen, anyway, we must, we'll we must have some other contact for him, right? I mean, I yeah. have his email address, but Renee's saying he's not responding. Yeah, that's the one I've got. And that I checked with Jerry, and that's the only one Jerry has. It's the um, same as I had. I've I've found his phone number. Ah. Oh. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Uh, well, I probably don't need to read it out on a meeting. I just email oh, it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Email it to me, please. Good idea. Okay. Right. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Um, um that anyone needs to think about this, but there was one other grant that I sent over. It's not due until July, but um, I have it saved as well as the link to Con Edison that will be posting their grants on March 1st. So, you know, just something to look forward to if anyone's interested. Oh, and Renee, I found something for you. Remember, I don't know. Yeah, what you sent it to me. I need to talk to Jerry about it. It has to be, it has to come from the village. But that looked like a great program. You have to have 50 feet of waterfront in each plot that you apply for. So it's not a small, yeah. And they only give you one tree in a bag per 50 feet. Oh, wait, no, not the trees. I, I meant the, there was oh. a about the community garden I sent you. Oh, wait, I don't remember seeing that one. Sorry. That was a while ago. No, it was a while ago. I forgot what it was. It was some community garden uh, grant. Uh, okay, matter. I'll have a look. I'll, I'll find look. it. I'll find it. Sorry. So that's okay. But that's the most so recent one that you sent also looked like it would be really good. Oh, the trees. I think Ellen um, started to talk to the tree committee about that too. Uh, oh, good. Great. See, maybe get them on board. Yeah, but I wouldn't wait for them. I mean, I, I put Beverly in a loop. She seemed interested. Um, Did that mean yeah. that she was going to write them? I, I mean, I don't know if we all should write them. I don't or, think she was going to write them. Let, let me see what she said to me. I don't know if we can. I mean, I guess a committee can apply on their own. I mean, I don't know. Well, if I mean, can. Uh, listen, you, the, you the had... grant that we just did without the consultants, without the village consultants' help, we it would have taken me 12 years. Like it, she did she compiled a vast amount of information in a, a couple of days so and and she knew exactly how to advertise it and exactly how to write it and and also did the submission so i think what what she needs is people to feed her information so if you find a right mm -hmm. grant with the right sort of niche fit and we think that we've got enough people that we can say okay here's what we have and this is why we need it and this is the backup information that you need and 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 then she just does it and it's pretty That's stupendous awesome. I mean, this yeah, one looks pretty straightforward. It's a two-page application. It's really straightforward. Yeah. Because because they're not really giving that much away, but whatever, it's free trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. we might as well, right? We just have to have a plan as to, like, probably have to clear an area to plant them. Well, so I'm just thinking that it could go hand in hand with all the plots that Christy has just identified. Right. I mean, Do we, we have to easily wait? absorb those trees into the all of that stuff that goes along the sheldrake and the membrane. Right. I mean, I think I think this is where we need the tree committee and maybe tell them that this is our focus because the reality is is that um, 
flood mitigation and whose property is it and what kind of tree is it? It gets really complicated. Right. I, I, I want to, may I step in? May I say something? Uh, just caution you about, about that because the flood mitigation, we don't know what it looks like yet. Right. And, uh, and, and, and I, I got to believe that they're going to uh, substantially uh, change, to put it mildly, uh, uh, many stretches of, the, of, of both rivers. And, um, and we should monitor for invasive species. So when they put stuff back, it's the right stuff and, and they take it out. I mean, I, I think this is going I, I don't know, but I suspect it may be uh, fairly unpleasant in the transition, but it, it's, it's like getting a new knee, you know, it's going to hurt. Lou, are you the liaison on the flood mitigation committee as well? I am not. I, am not. I just I, I just know from from reporting on it, it's oh. 88, $88 million dollars worth of, uh, of, of, of uh, stuff to move water. And it's it, it can't be it can't be gentle. It can't. <laughs> <laughs> so. So uh, um, keep that, keep all that in mind, you know, I mean, and, 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 and we need your input as they go along to let them know, do while you're here, take that stuff out while you, you know, or, and then as you, as they, they got to repair it again, put the right stuff in back in again. I mean, it's going to, you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long process. It's going to be very uh, difficult. Sorry. That's it. No, I, I, I completely agree, which is sort of why we started with this pollinator, just because we want some attention to the waterways, because we think the more people see the waterways as a resource instead of a dumping ground, yeah. the more that the hopefully the new mitigation efforts will include public space, because it's easy to flood a pathway. It's harder to flood a business. So, you know, well, I mean, for, yeah. for people are involved with it. But I think the tree committee fell short on the number of trees that they were trying to plant. Um, it depends, obviously, on the sapling and the size, because, you know, Renee, you know this, you can't just put it in the ground, it actually has to be cared for, so, and Mandy, but, and, and I, I don't know that we know where, where all the, all the issues are for, for the, uh, for the flooding, I mean, I saw something today that I was completely unaware of, that Harrison is going to do just north of the border along the, um, along one of the rivers, and uh, they, they, uh, their consultant says, uh, um, you know, a 300 yard stretch uh, needs to be deepened by a foot and a half, and uh, you know, I mean, that's that's a, that, and that's before it even gets to us, you know. So um, there's a lot that a lot will be going on, a lot will be going on. All right, guys. Um, Happy news. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, I think we've covered our agenda. Um, we were supposed to have somebody come on at the end. She's not on, so I'm, I'm going to um, make a motion to close the meeting, but I do just want to introduce what she wanted to talk about. This is a resident of the village. Um, she's actually chair this committee once upon a time, and she's concerned about the health impacts of 5G. And some towns are revamping their telecom ordinances to address 5G in that there are smaller cells. They tend to be lower to the ground. They tend to be, um, you need more of them. So. I know that our village, I think our telecom law is like 20 years old before even the iPhone. So um, this was talked about, I think a year or two ago, nothing really happened. Um, I, I think it's such a big issue that it would really require sort of really a dedicated task force. Um, it's not something that I'm personally um, wanting to take on at this moment, but you know, and if you could think about that and I could put you in touch with Allison, there's a lot of, lot of research out there um, if you want to delve into this topic, it, it's, it's important. I mean, this is our health. Um, I know Scarsdale just passed an ordinance. I think I, yeah, I believe I forwarded it to everybody today if you saw it. And it's really just sort of limiting where you could have cells, you know, trying to not have them right by, you know, people's homes, by, by schools, you know, all the obvious places where you would want to avoid having what's potentially cancer causing. Um, so it, I mean, 5G is here, <laughs> we're not gonna get rid of it, but it's just trying to roll it out in, in a safe manner. So I'm just introducing that topic. Um, Allison really wanted us to sort of have us start thinking about it. And as I said, she was supposed to come on. I'm not sure why she didn't. Maybe she got busy or she couldn't um, figure out the Zoom. I've, um, I've, I've had some brief exposure to that sort of conversation through the Rye Sustainability Group. And I can tell you that I think what Rye 
the right group is focusing on is is rather than letting the be the businesses who try to make the decisions on the locations of these transmitters that the villages have some degree of say rather than just giving it you know if you rent the place then you can transmit your signals um i think it's certainly something i can't pay attention to but does need attention yeah Rye also recently um, revamped their ordinance. They have a very new law. And my recommendation when this topic came up, I don't know, a year or two ago, was like, let's not recreate the wheel. <laughs> let's do take what Rye did and let's just do it over here because I'm sure they did a good job. Yeah, um, sure. but nothing, nothing really came of it. But it, it is an important issue. Tarrytown had something about it too. Uh, a year or so ago, they had uh, uh, the, the, the cell towers were all in one part of town. And of course they put them where, you know, low income people were. Well, that's not the answer either, obviously. Oh, no, but no, no. Yeah. That, that's, that, that, that's why they reacted though. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, guys, well, in the interest of time, I'm gonna make a motion to um, close out our meeting. I think it was really productive. And I think we have really a lot of cool stuff going on. All right, any, uh, um, I mean, uh, I'm here to listen. Is there anything I'm supposed to take back to the, uh, the board or? Will you just let us know with a, a written? Well, Lou, I guess what I would say is um, we would love to see some traction on the um, EV infrastructure. I got that written down, EV, EV. Okay, okay, EV. Um, solar on a roof of a village building. Okay. And- um, Litter. Yeah, if you can get- some trash cans put around town. Take the mm -hmm. old ones from Harbor Island and stick them anywhere you can and try to pick them up. I mean, start looking at alternative trash okay. pickup. Those three things. If you guys, I mean, listen, you you advise the board. You put something together, you pass a resolution, you send it over to us, it's official. I will tell them what I heard, but you can uh, you can put that in writing also and send it over and I'll be happy okay. to do that. And I'll, 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 those three things, they I absolutely will hear about, okay? All right. Hey, We're really you. happy to have you on board here. Thank, thank you. you. This is a joy. It's a joy. Thank you very much. All right. Um, wait, motion to end the meeting. Second. Second. Okay. All right. Favorite. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Thanks, Lou. All right. Bye-bye.